At this time, the chair would entertain a, a motion to recommend to the Board of Commissioners approval of the Berry County 2019 to 2019 apportion, apportionment report. I would make that motion. Moved by supported. Connor, supported by Gibson. Um, Mr. Vandermark <coughs> is not here this morning. He has had something come up with his family and was not able to attend. I just wanted to have it um, brought to the attention of the committee so that we could refer it to the full board next week and have it placed under items for consideration so he can um, discuss it with us then. Any other questions or concerns? I, I think it's just a pretty standard report. It's not like he's asking for money. Um, well, yeah. Um, if there's no further <coughs> questions, then the question would be to recommend to the Board of Commissioners approval of the Berry County 2019 apportionment report. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. The item is approved. Um, next is Tammy Price from the Specialty Courts. Um, the Board would entertain a motion um, to request from the Board of Commissioners approval for the fiscal year 2020 grant contracts for adult drug court, sobriety court, swift and sure sanctions probation program, and for authorization <laughs> for the Berry County Trial Court Administrator, Inez Straub, to electronically sign the grant contracts on behalf of the county. So moved. Support. And I, that wasn't even the right motion. That was the subject. Sorry. Um, but it's pretty close. So I think we'll just leave it go. Um, so moved, moved by Smelker, support by Gibson. Sorry. Sure. Find myself not paying attention and then I get really distracted. <coughs> Tammy, Excuse the floor me. is yours. Good morning. Um, we have received three state grants and one federal grant and I'm asking you to approve the contracts and um, in addition to approve NS drop to sign those contracts through DocuSign. Um, this is new to web grants which is the um, the means in which we apply for Excuse me, could you put the sure. you're welcome thank you you're welcome uh, so web grants is the means to which uh, we apply for the grants and that's also beginning this current fiscal year the way that they are having our contracts signed um, next year we'll ask to add the board of commissioners to web grants but for this year I'm asking that you authorize Inez Trapp to sign those as she's already listed on the web grants um, the sobriety court is uh, funded through county um, money as well as a state grant for 41,000 and a federal grant for 70,000. The Swift Insure program is funded all with a state grant for 123,000. That's a $3,000 increase over last year. Um, but partway through last year, we received an additional $3,000 for drug testing. And the adult drug court grant is a state grant for $128,000. Any questions for Tammy? Vivian? You mentioned that the Swift and Sure got an increase. The other three are the same? No, the other three actually got a decrease. Um, oh, the Adult Drug Court grant was a $3,000 decrease, and the Sobriety Court was a $5,000 decrease. Some of that's based on expenditures mid-year last year. Okay. Some of it's based on our numbers. Um, the numbers for those programs were a little bit well, for sobriety court was a little bit low. Well, that's good. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> I mean, I mean, we're having less clients there. We um, have made some changes to the programs. So for sobriety court, we have made that both a felony and misdemeanor court. Um, the criteria for getting in um, is that you have to have an operating under the influence of drugs or alcohol. So <coughs> adding the felony component to that is new, and then additionally narrowing the focus on that um, sobriety court grant is new. That made room to add some additional participants into the, the adult drug court um, as we've had a 38% increase in new petitions or new um, charges being filed in adult court for meth-related uh, incidences. 
So I'm, I'm pretty confident that we're going to fill up very quickly. The adult drug court is at around 35, 36 participants. We can take about 40. The sobriety court um, is about at 15 participants. We can take up to 25. I expect that number to increase um, with the addition of adding the felony OWIs. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions for Tammy? I just <laughs> Thanks. The federal grant is a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Understatement <laughs> of the day. <laughs> Any other questions for Tammy? Just one. Um, I echo Dan's thoughts. We appreciate the time and detail it takes to put those grants in. But just a question with, uh, with marijuana uh, becoming recreational and decriminalized. Is that going to make an impact on what you do, or is it that felony component that really doesn't affect it that much going forward? Um, unfortunately, it is still going to impact what we do with our treatment programs, well, with our specialty courts, Swift and Sure included. We won't allow the use of marijuana. Um, it still activates that addiction in people. Um, it's still unhealthy. And so it, it does impact our program. We're finding that the... Um, the level of THC in the marijuana today is significantly higher than it used to be, and it's staying in their system longer. And so it's very, it's uh, become more difficult to decipher new use versus old use, but we are still addressing that in our specialty courts. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? Thank you. Um, hearing no, discuss no more discussion. The question before the committee is to recommend to the Board of Commissioners approval of the fiscal year 2020 grant contracts for adult drug court, sobriety court, Swift and Sure sanctions probation program, and to authorize Berry County Trial Court Administrator Inez Straub to electronically sign the grant contracts on behalf of the county. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The item is approved. Thank you, ma'am. Um, next before us is um, Luella and Stephanie Lehman. Um, the question before the committee is to recommend to the Board of Commissioners approval of the 2020 proposed Barry County Health Plans for Barry County employees as recommended by the Barry County Health Care Cost Containment Committee. So moved. Second. Moved by Gibson, second by Smelker. The floor is yours. That time of year again. Um, I have Stephanie Lehman with me today, um, and she is a member of the Healthcare Cost Containment Committee that meets every year to review available health plans and make a recommendation to you for plans that we would like to have in place for the new year starting January 1st. Um, the committee met the first time and reviewed the priority health renewal rates for the current plans that were in place. Um, in the meantime, the agent that we work with um, was getting quotes from Blue Cross Blue Shield, um, presented those back to the committee, and there was a significant savings. Uh, so then, um, as is customary, the agent also shared those rates with Priority Health. Um, Priority Health came back with a revised quote, which reduced the premiums by about 2.1%, um, still not as much as the overall 4.77% decrease with Blue Cross Blue Shield. So the committee is recommending to switch back to Blue Cross Blue Shield Blue Care Network uh, you may recall that we were with Blue Cross and Blue Shield and Blue Care Network for a number of years, uh, switched to Priority Health back in 2016. Now we are asking to switch back. I'll let Stephanie make any comments that she wishes to share. So two things really stood out for us with the Blue Cross numbers. Um, number one, obviously, they were a significant decrease from the current rates that we're paying from prior paying with Priority Health. And so um, if you're a numbers person, you do this simple math. Um, 
We go by the hard cap, Public Act 152, for those of you that are familiar with that. Um, so that those numbers are what those numbers are for the county, but the cost savings to the employee, the bottom line, the dollar for the employee is significant with the Blue Cross numbers. One thing that also stood out um, was that Blue Cross was willing to offer us a cap for 2021 rates on an increase. And so that increase is not to exceed 7.9%. Um, this will be my 10th year <coughs> on the committee, serving on the committee. In previous years, we've seen increases of 18%, 21%. And so these are, um, in my tenure on the committee, the lowest number of, um, of increases that we've seen. And also talking to not only the group that I represent, but some other, some other county employees, Blue Cross and Blue Shield is a little more widely accepted than, um, than Priority Health. So there was um, some, some also conversation and, and consideration for that. Um, there will probably be a little bit of disruption or minimal disruption for, um, for employees as we, if you approve this, as we transition on back to Blue Cross. I think that when we transitioned from Blue Cross to Priority, there were three employees that were adversely affected at that time, as in their primary care providers were not in network providers with priority health. And so I anticipate that we will probably see some of that um, as well. One other consideration is for the county employees that are coming from the Lansing area, there are no priority health providers in the, in the Lansing area. And so that forced them to, to make some those things were conversations and considerations that um, that we made. But if you take a look at um, two of the plans, two of the plans for sure are significant um, decreases in premium, some almost 50% of what the employee is currently seeing. Questions? Any questions for Luella and Stephanie? Go ahead. So even though there's a decrease in the premiums, um, it's not being shared between both the county and the employees. It's the decreases only on the employees' part, and the increase and our the county share is increased. That is correct. the The county um, has chosen to go with the state caps under yeah. PA 152. And the Treasury Department sets what the amount is for each new year, and this year they set the amount um, at a two percent increase. So since the you know the county has agreed to use the caps, that's what we base the county payment on. We, do we have to use the caps? Uh, our other option would be to to do a eighty twenty I cost see. share. I see. Okay, thank you. Well, that's, that's, that answers my question, yeah. The 80-20 is a whole different, I got understand that. Any other questions? Two, any better number crunchers than the ones you got? Um. There being no further discussion, the question before the committee is to recommend to the Board of Commissioners approval of the 2020 proposed Barry County Health Plans for Barry County employees as recommended by the Barry County Health Care Cost Containment Committee. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The item is approved. Mr. Neeb. At this time, the chair would entertain a motion to recommend to the Board of Commissioners approval to award the 2019 to 2022 snowplow contract to JLS Rose Construction. So moved. Second. Moved by Gibson, second by Smelker. The floor is yours. Hi. Good morning. Um, we bid this contract out on a regular basis every three years. Uh, Last year, we ran into some struggles with the with the vendor, uh, and one of the provisions uh, in the contract is we can cancel, so we did. So we're a little bit early this year uh, in the contract, but uh, so anyway, that's why we have the contract in front of us this year. Uh, 
I did send out uh, three, con three bids to three different vendors who had uh, asked for them. Uh, none of those vendors returned bids. Uh, we advertised it in the banner, we advertised it online, uh, and the only bid we got back was from Rose Construction. So that's where we stand. I feel confident with Kyle and his crew, but uh, that's the only bid we did get. Any questions for Tim? I, I, I couldn't tell you, Dan. I, I think two of the contractors, especially two that I had talked to previously about it, I think the insurance requirements uh, took them out of it. They, they didn't have the insurances they needed and weren't willing to do it, I guess, for, for our contract. They uh, do Spectrum's uh, parking lot at Pennock. Yeah, they, they do. do. Yeah, they do. Yep. Any other questions for Tim? Hearing none, the question before the committee is to recommend to the Board of Commissioners approval to award the 2019 through 2022 snowplow contract to JLS Rose Construction. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. <coughs> Thank you. <coughs> the item is approved. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> you work in confined spaces with, I still got one, with sick kids and they infect you. What's oh, my whoops. excuse? I can, you want me I'm to stay sure. up here? I, come on, no, I jumped a gun. That's okay. I was the question, keep, um, I'll stick around in case there's any questions on this one. Well, <coughs> I apologize. Um, no, okay. Pam Palmer is here to present our next item. At this time, the chair would entertain a motion to recommend to the Board of Commissioners amending the previously approved October 15th to 2019 Committee of the Whole Meeting Minutes as attached and to ratify the previous action and appointment of John Van Neuenhuizen to the Board of Canvassers for the term that starts November 1st, 2019 and ends October 31st, 2020. So moved. Second. <coughs> moved by Geiger, second by Parker. The floor is yours. I am asking to amend the October 15, 2019 Committee of the Whole Minutes. Um, so that I can include <coughs> each of your individual vote um, rather than grouping you together. And that way it would be in full compliance with the Open Meetings Act. Any questions for Pam? No. Any further votes? Are we just going to do a roll call? I'm not asking that you re vote. I know. I'm just asking to amend the minutes to. to uh, indicate how he voted. I still have the, those sheets. To, to your question, John, I think in the future, um, you know, that was an interesting question I asked when, when our attorney was here. I, I took the opportunity to ask. Um, because the law indicates that uh, she'll use a paper ballot, and, um, Dave has indicated that uh, many, many counties now do a roll call vote um, and only use a paper ballot if a commissioner uh, request that if you may so there isn't anything um, that would preclude you in the future if the board wanted to just do it by roll call vote I lost my paper so I'm not gonna <coughs> ask him for that again um. <laughs> well even if we do take a roll call vote Pam has a written record of that roll that's call. correct so and, and she I know that she submits that in with all her kept records so any other questions for Pam? Hearing none, the question before the committee is to recommend to the Board of Commissioners amending the previous... Oh, do we have to make the amendment? No, the amendment's here? attached. Okay, thanks. Um, amending the previous approved October 15th, 2019, Committee of the Whole Meeting Minutes as attached, and to ratify the previous action and appointment of John... Van Neuenhuizen to the Board of Canvassers for a term that starts November 1st, 2019 and ends October 31st, 2023. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 <laughs> Opposed, nay. The item is approved. Thank you. I'll uh, just comment that this, you know, for what's worth, the streaming does get watched. This was uh, a technical catch that uh, was brought, up to it, brought to us by uh, somebody that was watching it on streaming afterwards and shot me an email so uh, um, 
it was again a good kind of technical catch relating to the Open Meetings Act and uh, appreciate it. The anonymous whistleblower. Yeah. Well. Mm -hmm. No, thank you to whoever you are. Alrighty. The next question before us is um, to recommend approval of the attached administrative rate addendum to the agreement between Barry County and Veripro of Grand Rapids, Michigan, effective January 1, 2020 through December 31st, 2020 for short-term disability administration and authorize the county administrator to sign it. So moved. Second. Moved by Gibson, second by <clears throat> Connor. Michael, the floor is yours. Sure. Um, this is for our uh, uh, short-term disability program um, that we, that we uh, provide. Um, I'm happy to explain the short-term disability if you'd like. I, I think I have in the past, but um, I'll um, kind of cut to the chase. Uh, it's a uh, uh, renewal pricing that remains the same as previous, so there is no change to this agreement. It's just a continuation with Veripro, the, the company that provides the administration. If there's questions, I don't want to, I'd be happy to answer them. I, I just won't belabor it if, if there aren't. Questions for Michael? Hearing none, the question before the committee is to rec the rec to recommend approval of the attached administrative rate addendum to the agreement between Barry County and Veripro of Grand Rapids, Michigan, effective January 1st, 2020 through December 31st, 2020 for short-term disability administration and authorize the county administrator to sign it. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The item is approved. The next question is to recommend to the Board of Commissioners approval of the attached resolution authorizing the execution of Resolution <coughs> 1921, a resolution authorizing the execution of Contract 19-5446 with the Michigan Department of Transportation for the construction of a non-motorized path at the intersection of M79 and School Street. So moved. Support. Moved by Geiger, support by Jackson. You. Want me to all set? Yes, sir. Um, you may be scratching your head just a little bit and saying, hey, didn't we just do this? Um, yes, we did, um, but we did not uh, um, meet all the technical requirements that the state needs to, to do this, and that is a resolution. Um, we don't do many resolutions. We do things by motion. You did a motion to approve the contract, but the state specifically wants a resolution, and, and they had requirements and with, within that resolution, specifically who will be signing that agreement um, that they are, were asking for. So this is, uh, uh, again, a technical and, and maybe perfunctory, um, but so that we can finalize what you, uh, in accordance with the state's requirements, what you previously approved relating to that uh, um, paved non-motorized path. So Asheville. Any questions for Michael? Hearing none, the question before the committee is to recommend to the Board of Commissioners approval of the attached resolution authorizing the execution of Resolution 19-21, a resolution authorizing the execution of Contract 19-5446 with the Michigan Department of Transportation for the construction of a non-motorized path at the intersection of M79 and School Street. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. <coughs> Opposed, nay. The item is approved. Thank you. The next item to come before the committee is to recommend to the Board of Commissioners approval to align the membership from the former Agricultural Promotion Board with the membership as stated in the bylaws for the Barry County Conservation Easement Board as recommended by the Barry County Conservation Easement Board and shown on the attached board membership roster. So moved. Support. Moved by Geiger's um, support by Gibson. Um, this is just to make sure that all our members are accounted for and, and slotted in the in the correct um, spaces um, as our, the bylaws got changed. Um, it will shorten the term of Mr. Vanderbo, who was originally um, an ag interest appointee. Um, it was a convenient thing that he was on the planning and zoning committee but the way the bylaws changed that is an annual appointment by planning and zoning now um, and so and he 
is, as long as planning and zoning reappoints him, he could stay on the board. Um, it's just it, there was a, little, a different delineation than what the previous ordinance had said. <coughs> are there any other questions? Or are there any questions? Sorry. We don't have to clear anything else. No, it's that. nope. It's just that making sure that the um, the positions are all filled appropriately. I mean, in December, Mr. Sansomino's term is up, um, and there's a vacant, the township official position would expire annually for <coughs> every two years. But other than that, we just needed to make that one change so the Planning Commission can have an appointee. But there's less members. I mean, when I look at this list on the top, there's more people there than on the bottom. Because of the way it changed, um, okay. Conservation District had um, two appointees that we had to approve, and when the ordinance got changed, those were um, all just kind of shuffled in, and there's um, fewer members. Um, one, two, five, six, seven, eight. There's nine, and I think there was one, one um, position that they got rid of. Oh, unless, unless you don't want to change it, you have that power. Are you going to make a motion? I can make that motion here to change your bylaws? Yeah. yeah. That's the motion. That the commissioner on the board has a vote. Support. Move to amend. Um, to change the the voting designation for the county commissioner on the egg or the Berry County Conservation Easement Board. So um, this is just a committee. Uh, we can have vote on a marked up bylaws next week. I like John's idea. I mean, we're we're elected to make decisions. Right. Does that board have a vote on whether or not they accept that motion, or does that become the board rule or their bylaws? We have the right to change any of the bylaws for any of our committees. It's a top town decision. It's not usually done without talking to the board, but I don't think that they all of the members would object. Seeing you're the commissioner on there, just give you a vote. It'd give me an extra vote because I would vote at that level and then I would vote here too. There's no problem with that. No, oh, that's what happens on the planning commission. I vote on the planning commission, oh, and then right. yeah, okay. so. And we, yeah, I mean, you vote at the airport. Yep. They yeah. vote at the transit. Um, so, I, they so do. We have two on some of them, so well, yeah. So they do have a meeting on Thursday, and I can let them know and what we were looking at and see what they say. I don't think they'll, they'll object. Um, so on the amendment, it was moved to amend the, um, is it a bylaw amendment or is it a, yeah, because we took that out of the ordinance. Moved to amend the um, conservation, Berry County Conservation Easement Board amendment or bylaws to allow the commissioner um, Voting, voting privilege. Right, voting privileges. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The item is approved. So, um, <coughs> the request is now to recommend to the Board of Commissioners approval to align the membership from the former Agricultural Promotion Board with the membership as stated in the bylaws for the Conservation Easement Board as recommended by the Berry County Conservation Easement Board and is shown on the attached board membership roster as well as the amendment to allow the commissioner voting privileges. Um, any discussion? All those oh, wait, wait, I got a question. That okay. wasn't the original motion. This I read the original motion and then I added the amendment 
to give the commissioner voting privileges. Oh, but we just <coughs> did that in the previous vote, didn't we? No, I we voted on the amendment, right. and then I added it to to the um, original motion. So we need to to vote on the original motion now. Smoker and Gibson voted or er, made the amendment. We passed the amendment. Now we have to pass it all with that amendment. I thought it was a totally separate motion. You did another motion. All I have to do is add to the original motion, comma, and to approve the uh, attached amendments to the bylaws. At the discretion of the chair. We all agree that we made an amendment. We made there was a motion to amend the bylaws since we're already uh, we're ready to approve the bylaws. There was a motion to amend the bylaws, and we would be sending that motion with the approval of the people who sit on the committee and an amendment onto the next board. That sound right? Yeah. All righty. All those in favor, please aye. say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. The item is approved. It's all good. <laughs> all right. The next item is to recommend to the Board of Commissioners adoption of the attached resolution supporting the passage of legislation to adopt four-year terms for county commissioners. So moved. Yeah. Moved by Gibson, second by Connor. Discussion. So this was brought to us from, Vivian brought it back from the MERS, uh, not MERS, MAC conference. Um, there was an amendment or a change to <coughs> The original one that she brought us, and this resolution um, has that amendment in it. I don't think we voted on the first resolution that came. Um, this would change our, um, this resolution would be in support of changing the terms of the commissioners to four years rather than the two-year cycle that we currently have, like the, like the state reps. Um, it would align us with the uh, thought that we used to be the Board of Supervisors and they serve a four-year term and that's where the theory come in where we would have a four-year election cycle rather than a two. Any discussion? Um, go ahead, John. You go ahead because I was going to kind of go over what you mentioned. Yeah. Um, I have thought about this a lot um, and I'm going to oppose this resolution because I'm not sure it makes it I'm not sure it's good for voters I know it's good for county commissioners because we don't have to run as many elections but anytime you limit the voters opportunity to pick who they want uh, I don't think it's good for government um, we have lots of um, local elected offices um, across the nation that are two years um, all the way uh, from here all the way up to Congress so I, I'm not afraid of being held accountable to the voters and I think it would be a mistake to um, give them less chances to pick the board they want I guess I got to kind of echo that and when they first brought this up I was all for it because it would make life easier for me mm -hmm. or for the next commissioner then after talking with Ben and him and I don't always agree but mm -hmm. But I do feel that this would limit our constituents. I'm going to have to go along with that. Commissioner Gibson, do you have thoughts? <clears throat> My thought on it is that when you run for a two year term, you're just starting to learn the ins and outs and what you ought to be doing. Then you got to go right back out and campaign again. It's uh, for the first time, the first two years, it's pretty stressful on a, the, the new person learning what they're supposed to be doing and everything, and I don't see the four years being that bad. 
Commissioner Connor. I don't have any problem campaigning. I mean, I, that that isn't even my thought uh, of a problem with campaigning. But um, when a board has a four-year term, I think it gives them more time to get things done. Often our projects are multi-year, and so and you lose some of that institutional knowledge when you pass something and then you get a new board member on. So. Um, yeah, if the constituents, I mean, want two years, two years, but I think that this is in alignment with the other county electeds. So, and I think it would help with institutional knowledge and getting things done. Commissioner Jackson. Um, I think four year terms create some stability in leadership and with just working together and fostering those relationships both in the community and with people in the other departments that you work with, it takes a long time to grasp that knowledge and those relationships to really find out yeah. how transit works and the airport works and all the different things that are involved in this. And when you're in for two years, and I spent a lot of time campaigning last year, which like Vivian said, it's okay. not a problem. That's not the issue, but it's a complex position based on what I thought I was getting into versus what I got into was eye-opening. So, much different than what I thought too. Yeah, yeah, it's not, a, um, it's not, and I think in the interest of the people you represent, it's good for them to have some stability <coughs> as well, and somebody who actually has a foothold and knows what they're doing in that position versus flipping into a new, you know, leadership person and retraining it. I mean, it's a, it was very complex, and I'm still learning all the time at this. So it's uh, five years into it, there's still a lot to be learned. So I will support the resolution for four years, although I don't think Ben's, Ben's and John's thoughts are wrong. I think there's, there's some good schools of thought in there that there's no wrong answer <coughs> in there. Excuse all me, of your David. other local elected officials at the township level, um, sheriff, clerk, everything else are four-year terms, and they're that way for a reason. I know. I think it was supposed to follow the state legislature for state reps since that was a logical step. But I think it's a disservice when you're going through commissioners so quickly that they don't get a chance to grasp the actual job to serve their constituents. So I'll support the resolution. Commissioner Parker. I feel that every time the elections come around, there's a big distraction from some of the stuff that we're supposed to be getting done. And I know that everybody is working at it, trying hard, but that is a distraction. Uh, it's interviewing with a newspaper, it's, it, it, it's going to meetings, uh, that's strictly to try to make sure that out there to the public to, to know what's going on and it distracts from getting things done I think in the and I think you could be more effective if you had the four, four year terms uh, I just, and I think the learning curve is is big too but you know that's I can learn from new people coming on the board too I don't have any problem with that it's just the fact that it is a distraction and I think it takes away Thank you for the discussion and the candid comments. Um, this is just a resolution. This is not voting ourselves a, a four-year term. This is in support of a MAC policy that they are pursuing at the state level. So I, I agree with both opinions. Um, there is discussion at the state level of changing the term limits that we already have. There's a big group of people that would like to see state reps terms change and senators change. Um, it really hasn't gotten much traction, um, but this is a little bit different. This is the local level and it would add some consistency to um, how things get done here. Um, had some of our terms been different, <coughs> the master plan 
may have already been taken care of because somebody would have been here an extra two years to do that. Um, we, we may not have had to have the meeting last night had that term been a little bit longer and somebody could have kept the ball rolling on what they were already doing. Um, I, I think I would support the resolution as well um, just because of that. It's the sheriff is four years, the clerk is four years, the um, register of deeds is four years, our township officers are four years, um, and I, but I wouldn't be opposed to seeing our term be staggered with their, like with a, mid, a midterm election. Um, so there's a lot of room, wiggle room for this resolution and um, how it would be implemented. And right now it's not a vote, it's just a resolution. So. Is there any other discussion? No, but I could remind you that the city council has eight elected officials, and every two years, four of them are up, so they keep four all the time. So they never change. They could never lose everybody at the same time. They have talked about um, that, my exact idea, who at the state level, making it so there's no potential to lose everybody on the on the board or on a council but again I, I um, worked in the governor's office for eight years and um, I've served I worked in that the House of Representatives and served on this board um, and I can tell you um, the four-year terms are different um, and uh, I personally like to be uh, a little accountable to my voters and um, I, I don't, I don't want to see that change so any other discussion <coughs> hearing then all those in favor of supporting the rest of, uh, of to recommend all those in favor excuse me the question before the committee is to recommend to the Board of Commissioners <coughs> adoption of the attached resolution supporting passage of legislation to adopt a four-year term for County Commissioners all those in favor please say aye aye, aye. opposed nay aye. the item is approved Limited public comment. At this time, any member of the public wishing to address the committee may do so for up to three minutes. Good morning. Good morning. Kathy Gramsci, resident of the city of Hastings. Quite a long time ago, I sat in this chair and told you that Barry County taxpayers wouldn't buy a pig in a poke. I was at the meeting last night and it seems they don't like being asked to have questions and input on a pig and a poke. The meeting was a miserable failure to the people who attended it, who hadn't been carefully following all the information about the proposals. They were being asked to ask questions and to give input on a pig and a poke. They had no idea what the various options are. They wanted to know what the options are. I realize that you commissioners need their input to make good decisions, <coughs> but you have to give them enough information to ask questions. The people that I talked to had no idea why we need a new jail, why we need a new COA. I think the county would have been better served if the presenter had not rushed through those periods of the presentation as rapidly as possible and if that had been the focus of the whole thing. Give the people the information that they genuinely don't have about why we need a new jail. What's wrong with the new jail? What is, what is not working at the new jail? why the COA needs more space, what benefits the new space will provide. And that just didn't happen last night. Another meeting where you actually do present real information, hard facts, I think would be more worthwhile than moving to the next step in the process with presenting a plan. That's all. <laughs> Good 
Congressman Brown again. Uh, first of all, I think that uh, when I use the word county commissioners, don't take this personally. It's just that you happen to be one right now. So uh, the four-year term thing I think is good. Uh, you need a lot of continuity with a job like this. Uh, when you get elected to be a, when you get to be an elected official, some, sometimes it takes you about a year to figure out where the bathrooms are. We say that when they go to Lansing or Washington, not quite here, it takes that long to get through the, uh, how, to le how to learn how to get through the uh, uh, security. But seriously, that, that would be very good. Um, at one time, the county commissioners uh, were comprised of the uh, supervisors, four-year terms. Why, did, why didn't they keep that? Uh, they didn't. Went to uh, eight commissioners, then they went back to seven. I can make a case that it probably should go back to eight. I could make a case for this, though. The city of Hastings constitutes 13% of the population of this county. But in area-wise, it's one-third of our township. They should have their own representative. Um, two commissioners basically represent, uh, well, not, not basically. Right now, two commissioners represent the city of Hastings and two townships, actually three townships. That doesn't make any sense. The, uh, the census is coming up, the new apportionment. I would highly suggest that we go back and take a serious look at that. Um, Vision Berry County. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me jump in here real quick here. Uh, we need a better, a, a better uh, way to replace members on the various boards that we have in the county. For instance, uh, the supervisor's township, quote unquote, they're always calling me about somebody for uh, 911, Berry County Soil Conservation District, whatever. If we get two people to come to our meeting, we're lucky. Well, actually, three. We've got to come up with a better way to, to get people to serve on these boards rather than going back to the, quote, uh, different organizations that are supposed to supply them. Forget it. That was that was then, and this is now. Hey, I always come when you bring ice cream. Pardon? I always come when you bring the ice cream. Just telling you, Jim. The uh, regarding the uh, uh, four-year plan that, uh, or the, uh, that, that's at the legislature, there's even, there's even another uh, sidebar on that to make uh, local uh, elections like ours at, at the county level nonpartisan. I could even make a case for that. That would, that would save a lot of screwing around too. <clears throat> Last but not least, I would like to thank you for the, uh, for the money for the Career Access Network. Um, we've made some massive mistakes in the last 10, 15 years on, on, who, on who should uh, have continued education. <coughs> we use that term when we think of college, it should be something else. Uh, everybody's heard of Leonardo da Vinci. He didn't go to college. He didn't go to high school. He didn't graduate either one of them. One of the greatest mindsets of the world. We have kids in our schools, even in Berry County, that are just as smart as Da Vinci is. We got to find them, and we got to get them going in the right direction. Not necessarily sending them to college or whatever, but send them in the right direction. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Joel Rutland Township, Ibbotson. He signed an affidavit pre-Siesta stating I could have his six minutes. Uh, the uh, thing that I see with the county is that they're proactive in the wrong areas and therefore have to be reactive on state legislation and uh, also federal, I might add. 
Um, you mentioned all of the, uh, uh, oh, wanting kids to go to college and whatnot. I spoke with an individual who probably every single person in this room is familiar with, and uh, he was talking with the management at a local manufacturing firm. And they had 50 people go through the pre-employment process, or, or the um, interview process, which were approved to get sent off for a drug test for employment. Guess how many people passed? There we go. Not even 10%. So this brings me to a meeting I attended prior when some ladies, some young girls from the health department showed up and gave a presentation on vaping. And what did the commissioners do at that meeting? Well, one of them brought up that the county needed to look into whether or not that vaping in the teen years was contributing to childhood and I quote, diabetes. Think about that. Just think about the etymology of that word. Is it even a word at all? No, it's not. And yet the commissioner said this is the direction we needed to go. Instead of being proactive there in the right area where the county could have passed a resolution as other counties had done <coughs> to ban vaping for minors. Now, some people say that vaping is something that leads to marijuana usage. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a cannabis uh, um, consumer, so I'm not going to give my opinion there, but some people say it. If the county had been proactive two years ago on this, do you not think that it would have helped the current crisis that we have with job placement out of high school? I tend to think the two correlate. Now, that being said, um, I, I think that it also, uh, y you can see how much of an influence that marijuana has just with the decriminalization of it and following jail population. We were exceeding our number of beds in the jail quite frequently. I don't even remember how many uh, emergency, uh, um, what do they call it? Uh, basically a state of emergency at the jail where they had gone to a critical point where it was almost the place where we needed to export prisoners into different counties. And then with the decriminalization of it, all of a sudden our population drops by a third. I think that we need to consider just, just that number alone should, should tell the commissioners we need to consider what it's going to take to not just get kids uh, um, college ready or, or job ready or whatnot, but make it so they can even work for one of our local manufacturing firms, which does not require a high school education. So anyway, I, I would like the county to focus on its essential requirements, such as a jail before they go speculating on what they think is best for the community, whether it be uh, um, job training or, or getting people ready for college or whatnot. Why does that even matter when they can't even get a job at McDonald's if they required a drug test? Any other public comment? <coughs> Good morning. Good to see you. Al Graves, Delton. Dave Jackson is my uh, commissioner. After two years, I wanted to fire him. Four years, I'll keep him. <laughs> uh, I'm here to comment on the meeting last night. Uh, I've been following this for some time. It's been almost, uh, well, it's been three and a half years at least, Ben, where I was at a meeting and I presented to you some recommendations about uh, building the jail. And uh, I've been just following this along. Uh, that, those recommendations, that was a real, uh, it was very uh, aggressive and it was meant to be that way so that there would be room for compromise. And uh, I think I, I see some of that compromise and some of those issues that w was on that was, uh, it came up last night. Uh, you guys have a tough road ahead of you on this, persuading the voters. 
uh, e either way or for both of those uh, projects that are coming up. Uh, you're going to come under a lot of fire, criticism. Uh, I, I understand that. I've been somewhat in that kind of a position. But just be encouraged. Personally, I'll be praying for you. Uh, you're going to need a little more guidance than what you have just right here. You guys are good people. I've gotten to know you a number of you over the years. I think you'll do what's right when the time comes. And uh, I'll be in touch with Dave, which I have been along the way. Uh, so you guys hang in there. Because, you know, it's, it's, I don't think it's going to get any better before it gets better. So I, I just wanted to say that to you. And Ben, just like you said back then, uh, we need to stop kicking this can down the road. <coughs> and I think you have. Now, some people don't agree with those meetings. And a number of things that was presented last night, I already knew because we've gone over a, a number of those issues before. But at least we're headed in a direction, and we've got a goal, and uh, we're just going to have to work through this process. And that's what it is. It's a process. It's just, it's just not going to happen overnight. So uh, I'll, uh, I'll be around, uh, not to criticize, though. I'll be around to try to present some the, the best options that I can see and to try to just encourage you guys to uh, hang in there. And uh, things will work out in the end. We'll get through this. Sir, any other public comment this morning? <coughs> My name is Charles Hertzler, and I do live in Hastings. And listening to this meeting today, stuff with this thing with the schooling and what have you. I wonder how much of this is uh, even being related to, and our own facts has said in 2018 they had reduced enrollment in, in these college classes and stuff. How much did that do to homeschooling? That they can't keep track of who's going into college not from homeschooling. And how much of it, like you say, is from the trade schools and the apprentice programs and stuff like that. And then how much of it is even to the fact that school populations are dropping? The, the, what it was back in the day when we had to build more schools, now you got more and more schools closing down because of less school population. So take these things into consideration. And then one other thing that I personally know of, because I talk to the kids that walk by my house every day on their way to and from school, and we get groups together and stuff. A lot of them kids are of the opinion because of today's society and all the stuff you see in the news and everything else. Why should they get a job? They're going to be free and free everything. The people that are not even U.S. citizens get free stuff. So why should they go out when they can get free stuff too? So how much of this is being taken into consideration with all this stuff that everybody's going out there? And maybe we have to refocus our stuff that we have to stop indoctrinating the kids in the schools and teach them, like when I went back to school in the 70s, how to fix things, how to work on things. Get the trades back into the high schools instead of this stupid socialist stuff. You know, i certified in heating and cooling. I'm certified in doing electrical work. I've done, I've done maintenance work all my life, whether being a mechanic in a garage and stuff, and I learned all that on my own, not through schooling. It's all on the hands job's doing, and what I want to <coughs> do, I fix robots. I can't program a robot, but I can sure fix it if it don't work. So it's all in hands-on and learning knowledge out there and stuff, and not all this other stuff that everybody wanting to push. I don't have a college degree for anything. Yeah, $30 an hour was my last job before I retired. You know, So I'm just saying that maybe more has to be looked at this from a different angle and actually get the kids from the school, away from the school influence and stuff, you know, having it with counselors and everything else, and have them talk to you as pre-adults. They're going to be out there working. They're our next generation. And they don't want a job because everything's free. Thank you. Any other public comments this morning? Thank you, sir. Hearing none. 
Is there any other business to <coughs> come before the committee? There being no further business and without objection, the committee is adjourned.